Good morning, this is Pastor Marvin Osborne with First Baptist Church of Birmingham, Ohio. I want to talk about the idea of repentance and forgiving oneself of maybe things you've done in your past. And that idea, can we let it go? Can we move on with life? Are we capable of pulling ourselves back up and, and receiving the forgiveness that God gives us? Because he's promised if we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Many times we need to let go of the past in order to continue to move on to the future. I look at Psalms chapter 51 today, starting in verse 7. It says, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out my mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then I will teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Psalms 51, 7 through 13. I like the fact that the psalmist here is using personal pronouns. Me, I, me, I, me, mine. Over and over again, he's talking about himself. He's not um, denying. He's not minimizing his, his transgressions. He's saying, God, I need you. I've blown it. I've sinned. I've transgressed. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. God, please forgive me of my sins. You know, if you want to let go of the past, number one, you need to recognize your falter, your failures of the past. Stop minimizing what you've done. Call it for what it what it is, and, um, and before God, because He already knows. He already knows. And don't try to blame it on somebody else. No one made you make that phone call to that girl. No one made you uh, take that that money. No one made you do this or that. You did it, and you must take responsible responsibility for it. And uh, so he says to uh, confess our sins, to agree with God what we've done is wrong. I am responsible, Almighty God, for the sins I've committed. And so he's saying here, that's what the psalmist is saying here, isn't he? He's saying here, I've done this, and uh, God, please, I don't want to, I don't want to wallow in this anymore. Take not thy Holy Spirit away from me. Different era. Um, the Holy Spirit could come on a person and go away from a person, depending on their closeness with God. But as a believer in Jesus Christ, if you're truly born again, the Holy Spirit resides in you. He'll never be taken away. But certainly he can be quenched. He can be stifled, can he? And, um, and we, we no longer feel his power in our life. He's, for you and I, we say, God, release the Holy Spirit in me. I want to have the joy of my salvation as he, um, as he says. I want to have that fellowship with you again. So we see a, a, the psalmist here, he's sinned, he's transgressed, he's confessed his sins, and God, now I want to move on with my life. And if you do this, God, and then he says, restore unto me the joy of my salvation, and whole, uphold me with thy free spirit, then I will teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. He's saying, I'm going to do my best to keep others from falling into the same sins I've done. That's a man who's lived a life of repentance. He's not going to go back to the old ways. Um, you know, David's not going to go look back at that uh, out that window again. He's not going to invite some other man's wife into his home. He's not going to commit adultery uh, anymore. He's not going to go into that any longer. God, I want to make sure that everyone knows that that is not the way to do it. That's, a, that's repentance, isn't it? That's true repentance. His his. Um, he was going one way and now he's going a different way. That's repentance. I'm agreeing with God. What I've done is wrong. My friends, 
we've all done things wrong. We've all sinned. We've all transgressed. We've all committed iniquity. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. None of us are perfect. We are saved by God's grace. We are kept by God's grace. And so you and I need to keep short accounts with God. We, like this psalmist here, need to confess our sins and be willing to repent of our sins and to keep others from falling into those same sins. You do that with your children, don't you? You blew it when you were a teenager. Maybe you got into premarital sex, or maybe you got into drugs, or you maybe got into alcohol, or you got into you know some kind of cr criminal activity. And and now with your children, you know you've repented, you've you've gotten away from that. Now with your children, you're trying to keep them from making the same mistakes you did, right? You see the same progression of where they're going and you see it's not going to end well for them like it didn't end well with you during that time the same is true here he says because god has forgiven me now i'm trying to keep others from doing going down that same path i love that passage don't you it applies to me and it applies to you it applies to all of us that um we need to keep short accounts with god we need to confess our sins and we need to continually um, um, keep walking that walk that he's called us to. Stop making excuses for the past. Let's let go of the past. Let's confess it. Let's repent. Let's move on because we have so much road to still go down. So many things left to do before he finally calls us home. This is Pastor Marvin Osborne saying, God loves you and I love you as well. And I'll talk to you as well.